<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, today I am by myself. Charlotte Ann is at home for the week um, and we wanted to get a video out, so you're stuck with me today. <laughs> um, so I kind of want to just get into the video. Um, as you guys could see from the title, today we're going to be talking about how to fight. And I don't mean literally like with your fists. I mean spiritually, um, fighting for your faith and um, in spiritual warfare. So jumping right into it. So today, guys, I have four points for you, which I'll be going over. But um, I kind of want to explain the story. So my first point is there is another in the fire. So if you know, if you go to church or whatever, you've probably heard the song. There is another in the fire. It's a very popular song, but um, that comes from the story of Daniel three, which I kind of briefly want to explain just to kind of um, explain that point. Okay, so explaining Daniel 3, starting with um, in the beginning of the chapter, it's um, King Nebuchadnezzar and he makes this image out of gold and he wants everyone to worship it. So he sets it in the province of Babylon and then he summons everyone. He wants them to bow down to this golden idol and he's the one of his men says, worship it or you will be thrown into the furnace. So naturally everyone starts bowing down to this gold statue and if you have been in church ever you have heard the three names Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and so everyone starts bowing down and they just they do not they don't bow down instead I say they kind of like sass them a little bit um, so if you go to Daniel 3 this is 16 it says Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him King Nebuchadnezzar we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of the gold you have set up. So in my opinion, this is the most like sass moment ever. You know, they're basically saying like, we are not going to worship this idol. Our God will save us. So naturally, this kind of made King Nebuchadnezzar a little angry, so he tells his guards, turn up the furnace as hot as it goes, and I want the biggest and the strongest guards to be guarding this while it's all happening. So they throw these men in the fire, and so um, they're sitting there, and King Nebuchadnezzar, this is jumping to 24, then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that were tied up and thrown into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So this is all, I, you know, this story, um, the end is, it's a beautiful ending. It's, um, he pretty much, I'm going to say the nice version, but King Nebuchadnezzar basically ends up saying, if you do not respect this God, you will be killed. So... That's the nice way you guys can go finish reading um, Daniel 3, but I say this to you guys just to explain that um, he is with us in the fire. You know, it's a very common term to say whatever storm you're walking through or battle you're going through, but that is the first point I want you guys to know is that he is with us in the fire, even in the midst. He might not pull us out of our battles or our, our struggles because it can be used for his glory, but when we're in the middle of them, he's going to be right there with us. Through, through the fighting. So my next point is um, putting on the armor of God. Now this is something that we've talked about in our past one of our past videos, but I kind of wanted to just reiterate this to explain this to you guys. Um, so I will be kind of just going through really quick just to um, so you guys can have this. But it says, this is um, Ephesians 6.10. It says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted to the readiness that comes from the peace of from the gospel of peace. And in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith from which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we have these things. I mean, metaphorically, you know, we're not, we can put all these on. We're not gonna start putting on, you know, armor every single day legitimately, but um, 
these are tools to help you guys you know we can it says that we can have the gospel of peace the the gospel is peace y'all so we can be armed in all of this so when we're going into battle we are ready with all of the armor that we can put on and the, the lord allows us to put this on daily we can put this on every single morning when we wake up we can put on our armor okay so for my third point we're going to be talking about um knowing the devil's intentions and being prepared and i know your first thought is probably oh my goodness what is she talking about this is not a scary thing i just am saying throughout scripture it talks about the intentions of the devil he even ends up tempting jesus himself but even in the beginning he has fought authority and he's fought anyone with power because of his own pride he wanted to be the one in charge so i want to look at some different scriptures that talk about knowing his intentions so that we can be prepared um, before he even gets to us so i have john 10:10 10, 10 that says the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy i have come that they may have life and have it to the full so here we can learn that satan only comes to steal to kill and to destroy. Now, these are not wonderful things to hear, I'm sure. But Jesus comes that we can have life and have it to the full. So now, 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Again, not super uplifting. Um, we can see from this, you know, that the devil's intentions are not pure, obviously. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. Now, this is one that I thought was really interesting says and no wonder for satan himself masquerades as an angel of light so now we know that he comes to steal kill and destroy he seeks like a roaring lions for someone to devour and he also disguises himself all so that he can harm us so we know these things so we can be prepared for the battle going into it okay guys and for my final point um i'm talking i'm gonna be talking about how to have a strong community i learned for myself personally that this is something that's really really important y'all if you hear nothing else please hear this i went through a lot last year and i hope i hope that in future videos charlotte Ann and i will be able to talk about that with you guys but um last year was really hard for me i went through a lot with mental health and just different things like that and my leadership team the other girls on my on my team through everything that I went through, they just sat there with me. And they loved me um, so well. They sat with me and they just prayed for me and they fought for me. So much so that I bought us all matching bracelets that say women warriors because that's what I called them. And because they fought for me so much and when the days that the days came that I felt like I couldn't fight physically because I was just so exhausted and I was just I was so frustrated. They, uh, they, would, they would fight for me and they would fight with me. So um, find a good community and I really encourage you guys to do that. But y'all know me, I have scripture to back it up. So some of the different pieces of scripture that I found that I thought were really encouraging to me through all this. So Hebrews 10, 24 says, through 25 says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So this talks about encouraging each other and pushing each other towards love and good deeds, which is sometimes all we really need in moments of, of hardship. I also wanna look at 1 John 4, 11 that says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, us, we also ought to love one another. So if you're a believer and you have Jesus in your heart, you know that we are so deeply loved by our Heavenly Father. So because of this love that we are shown, it is only a beautiful blessing that we get to, to share that with others, especially when they're going through hardship, letting them know that you're right there for them. Um, I also wanna look at Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10, that says two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. This one's pretty self-explanatory, y'all, I feel like. Um, if you fall and someone is with you, it's you know it's a little bit easier to get up because you have someone else with you to pull you back up. But if you're by yourself, it can be a lot harder and a lot more painful. So having someone else there to help pull you up when it gets hard is, again, a beautiful blessing from the Lord. And my last one, hold on there, guys, we're almost done, is Galatians 6.2 that says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. So... All of this to say, guys, there are so many things that you can do to fight, fight for your faith, because we ultimately, we, you know, Jesus is the ultimate winner. 
we have him on our side. So going through the points again, guys, we talked about that there is another in the fire. Even if you are in the midst of it and the Lord hasn't taken you out of it yet or shown you the end, he is with you in it and he will help you fight your battle. Um, we also talked about what it looks like to have and put on every day the armor of God to go into those battles, to have the tools to be able to do that. Um, knowing the devil's intentions and being prepared so that we know what to look for when we go into battle against the evil parts of the world. And my last point was having a strong community that will allow us to fight and will be there for us just to love us when we need it most. So I hope this encouraged some of you. I know this was something that the Lord has been putting on my heart as I've been going through a lot as well. And some days it's just kind of harder to get through and this, these different points really help encourage me. Um, it's different for everybody, I know that, but um, if you guys have any questions or you wanna talk or anything at all, please feel free to message us. We would love to talk with you guys and pray for y'all that it's such a blessing for us. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Charlotte Ann will be back next week. We have a fun video planned for y'all next week. So thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all, bye. Unbound. Mm-hmm. <laughs>